Man, so right now I cannot wait until I go to my first car meet with Project Pepto, meet some of you guys out there, have some people that don't know about my channel look at the suspension and just be mind blown. That's gonna be crazy. And now, you're watching the iconic fire festival of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on another video. Right now, Project Pepto, as we sit, it looks just like it did at the end of the last video. Everything's out of there and I wanna kinda of start to work on getting those 45 degree support braces or support bars. I wanna get those cut up, measured, get them all notched, a nice 45 degree notch, and I'll show you how to do that. So, the idea behind making a 45 degree notch is you wanna make sure two pipes come together and they have a nice seal and it makes a 45 degree angle and you can get a nice solid weld in there and I'm gonna be doing this without a tube notcher. Of course, if I had a tube notcher, this would be a lot easier of a process, but I'm just working with what I got. So this little magnet jig, this is real cheap. I think I got this at Harbor Freight. It couldn't have been more than $20. Anyway, so I'm gonna put this here and then the idea is I'm gonna have a tube with no cut on it or anything. And then what I wanna do is put this here and then eventually work on this tube until I eventually get a joint like this. So this is what I want the pipe to become, the one that was just sitting here. So that way I can take this pipe sit it down right there in a nice 45 degree angle. And the way that I can check my work is by moving this over, sliding it back, and that's a nice, it's flush right here. This is your flat, and then this is your 45 degree angle. So one of these bars is gonna be going right here, downward, and then I got some base plates that I'm gonna put here and here. So that way it's gonna be nice and strong and enough talking, let's get some of those cut up and then I'll kind of explain to you the process along the way. So the first cut that I'm gonna make is gonna be this cut and this is actually sharper than 45 degrees because in the end you want from this point to this edge to be 45 degrees, meaning this is gonna be not 45 degrees, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna put it in here and then make that first cut. So that comes off the saw with this burr on it and we're just gonna get it cleaned up. What I like to use is a flap disc. We're just gonna get it cleaned up from here. As you can see, that's it's pretty close. So holding it in the jig, you can see there's a bunch of airspace right here. That's because it's touching right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this to pull it back down a little bit and it's gonna make it more and more flush as I go. So that's what I'm doing. I just made my first baseline cut and then I'm trimming it away until it makes a good solid fit. So right here, you can see the gap a lot better. Right there, it's a big gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim this back a little bit and then hopefully that'll close that gap up. So after one cut, that looks a little better, but what I wanna take off is the same amount that I just took off. I wanna take off that same amount again. I don't wanna do overkill and cut too much because you can always do more, so you understand what I'm saying. So now it's actually touching a little more up here, but we're real close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit with the flap disc, try to clean it up real nice to make sure I can close in any gaps. But what we wanna really focus on is making sure that this is nice and flat, and this is nice and flat, and this joint will always be a 45 degree joint. So as long as we get this nice and tight, we'll be just fine. Man, so that's it. So there's probably, no, not probably. There's definitely a better way to do this, but I'm just explaining to you how I do this. Now, if you know the proper way to do it by drawing a cross plane and all different type of stuff, that works for you. This is just what I found to work best for me. Again, I just like to kind of keep chipping away at it, start from somewhere, and then eventually end up with a nice tight joint. So that's what we're going for. This will be perfectly fine. And this pipe or this tube is the longer tube. So now all I'll have to do is take our measurement and then cut it to length rather than 
cutting it and then making the fish mouth at the end. That's what the end of the pipe's called. It's a fish mouth because it looks like the mouth of a fish. So I want to make that before I cut it to length because cutting it to length is very self-explanatory. You just make one cut. The fish mouth, I don't know how much I'm going to have to trim off because honestly I'm not too great at it. So I got to keep trimming it back and trimming it back and every time I trim it, it gets shorter and shorter. So I make that first and then I cut the pipe to length. So I just jumped ahead a little bit. I cut the pipe to length and this is how I want it to look. It's going down there and I also have that base plate. So the spare tire well is not exactly even so these tubes aren't going to be exactly even but what I want to focus on is make sure that they're mounted in the same point compared to these ones or the center point. I made the center point in the last video as I was trying to figure out where exactly I want to weld the shocks down and that's what we got to do. So I'm going to get that tacked down and then we'll make the other one match. So as you can see man, it turned out pretty solid, I mean, I did my little base plate, everything looks good, the welds look pretty solid, the welds look pretty solid for me, again, I'm not a professional, I don't know how many times I can say that. Either way, I think it looks good and I'm definitely happy with it. So the next thing that I want to do is I just have these little interior pieces over here that I got with the car, they were real dusty, real nasty, so I just got them wiped down and I want to throw them in the car and kind of see how they fit. I'm not going to leave the car gutted because I... I don't know. I just don't like that look for my car. Don't get me wrong. I really do like that look. I think gutted and painted looks really cool, but I want this car to be a car that's going to be nice and comfortable. So I'm going to have all the plastic in the back and I don't know what I'm going to do about seats yet. I would like USDM ITR seats, but they're real hard to find. So if you know anybody or if you have USDM ITR seats available, message me on Instagram. Just direct message me. My Instagram is Bodivision. So hit me up over there if you have them. Let's see what these look like in the car. So they look pretty solid, dude. Everything is really coming together. And now this clip is about three days later from the last clip. What I've been doing the last couple of days is I've been working on the 240. I got everything else painted because it's finally warm enough to paint over here. So that worked out real nice. I got some of that stuff out of the way so that way I continue to give my full attention to Project Pepto. The only thing left I gotta do is I gotta buff it out. A bunch of wet sanding has already been done and I don't know if I'm gonna make a video on that. We'll have to see. So now I gotta get everything pulled out. Now that it's looking good, everything looks real nice and also these don't pivot anymore these are just solid so that makes all this extremely solid so it's not gonna go anywhere that's some of the problems that I was having before is those little pivot plates were wanting to swivel around and that's not what I want it to be I want it to be nice and straight and make the motion straight up and down not side to side at all so now it's looking really good check it out Ugh. And stuff's falling all over the place. So let's get that pulled apart now and I gotta start to get it prepped and ready for primer.
right, so I got it all cleaned up, ready to go. I finalized some of the welding. Some parts of it look a little better than the other parts, but overall, I know the entire thing's gonna be nice and strong, and I'm not gonna have any issues as far as longevity and strength on this system. I believe it's over-engineered, and that's, that's a good way to look at it. I hope all my stuff that I make is over-engineered so that way there's never a chance that it's gonna fail. So, in the next video, I'm gonna get it primed and maybe painted because we wanna make sure that metal is nice and protected and we don't want it to get rusty at all, so I gotta do that ASAP. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe, do all the stuff. You know what it is, YouTube, I'm out.